What is going on, New York Giant fans? Welcome back to another Big Blue in the Bronx YouTube channel video. If you haven't already, hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you know when a live stream pops or a video drops. Appreciate y'all coming back. And this is the debut of the 2023 New York Giants roster bubble series. First episode. If you guys aren't familiar with the series the last few years, I'm going to break it down. Then we'll get to the actual player we're talking about today. So usually this is about a 5-10 minute video each day from now till training camp begins. Uh, talks about a player who's on the roster bubble. Talks about their background. Talks about the competition. Then we go into how they could win a spot on the roster. How they could lose a spot on the roster. And a prediction at the end. So going to go into it right now. Today's player is Gary Brightwell. And let's go into the background. So Gary Brightwell was a 6th round pick. The last pick by the Dave Gettleman, Joe Judge era slash regime. And many did not know why the pick was made. It's like, okay, special teams, whatever. And he didn't get much action in his rookie year. And obviously, you had a backfield of Saquon Barkley and Devontae Booker and some of the other guys they had back there. Brightwell just never got a lot of touches. And in the preseason, he was meh. He was mostly used, again, for special teams in 2021. So he played in 13 games, had a rush for four yards. That was actually in the first game of the season. That was towards garbage time when the New York Giants were being blown up by the Denver Broncos. He also had a reception for six yards, again, against the Broncos. And that was pretty much that in terms of special team snaps, 58% his rookie year and 1% of offensive snaps that equated to 12 total snaps so his rookie this season was pretty much a bleh it, it was uh it was not very memorable to say so then you go on to 2022 and Gary Brightwell yes was on the roster bubble list last year he was one of the candidates um I did a video on him last year because I'm like hmm I don't know that this guy's gonna make the roster because last year was a bleh year for him, and this is a new regime. He did enough in the preseason to warrant himself a roster spot. And in 2022, he had a better year. 141 yards, one touchdown, 31 rushes, about 4.5 yards per carry, which is good. Uh, not much in the receiving game, to be fair. Five receptions, 39 yards, four first downs. And he also got some burst in the return game not that it's you know anything to write home about but he had about 21.3 yards per kick return which really isn't that good I think honestly last year his returning was better than some of the uh the return uh packages the New York Giants had in the past like I remember 2018 they were just like searching all over the NFL for a punt returner Stacy Coley um and then just some unmemorable ones the last few years. I uh, can't even remember some of the names right now. That's just how unmemorable they are. But he also played on special teams kind of like he did his rookie year. 63% of the snaps on special teams. And he also recovered a fumble, which was very important for the New York Giants in that specific game. Uh, that was, of course, against the Chicago Bears when Daniel Jones was injured. Tyrod Taylor was out for the rest of the game. And basically, it was Jones on one leg with Saquon Barkley as the quarterback. And they needed a turnover. And the Giants got it back because Gillen punted it. Valus Jones dropped it. Gary Brightwell recovered it. So Brightwell was a little bit more meaningful to the Giants offense and the Giants team in 2022 than 2021. That's kind of surprising because, you know, you expect the original regime that drafted him to kind of utilize him a little bit more. But Brightwell was used in a lot of different ways. And obviously it wasn't too often because you had Matt Breida ahead of him. You had Saquon Barkley ahead of him. And you had all those different guys. But Brightwell, obviously, if you guys remember uh, the drive against Green Bay, he was utilized there, a couple of carries, and also a touchdown run. And then if you guys remember against the Carolina Panthers in Week 2, Brightwell was used as a fullback on a third and one where it looked like it was going to go to Barkley up the middle, but no, it's Brightwell and it's for 15 yards, gets the Giants a first down and kills some clock. So a better year for Brightwell last year. Now, coming into this year, though, there is some competition. There's more competition than last year. And it really revolves in two areas for 
Gary Brightwell. It's the running back room and on special teams in general really revolving in that return room. So we'll start at running back. Deshaun Corbin is back. He obviously was with the Giants last year in the preseason. He was on the practice squad throughout the entire year. Didn't really get any action. Never got called up. Matt Breida was re-signed, so the Giants like him. And Eric Gray, they drafted him out of Oklahoma in the fifth round. And it's very unlikely that he's going to sit on the practice squad because, hey, it's a fifth-round pick. You want to utilize that unless he gets injured. You know, it's still kind of competition there. And then also, if you want to go to the kick return room, there's Khalil Pimpleton, who probably is more utilized on the punt returns, Jalen Hyatt, and overall, it's just not really defined right now who's going to be the head kick returner. Darius Slayton could also be the head kick returner. Uh, Default-wise, it could be Dornay Holmes. There's a lot of names floating around, but none that was really kept over. You know, Brightwell obviously handled it mostly last year. Richie James was the head punt returner. He's no longer with us. So it's pretty much an open room right now. And I think Gary Brightwell, um, as we go into how he can, he can win one of the jobs on the roster, kind of has to do that. So uh, he has to show burst out of the backfield on the second and third teams. Make most of your opportunities. And I'm going to say that a lot during these videos. Brightwell, right now, the odds are against him and Deshaun Corbett, but that's a separate video. Eric Gray, drafted in front of you. Matt Breida. Obviously has familiarity with these guys, and he's been here over a year. Yes, Brightwell's been here two years, but Burita has the better connection and has the more production in the time given as well. So show some burst out of the backfield. Show some speed as well. And I think, again, one of the most important parts, as we just talked about, contribute on special teams. Returning. Obviously, he was the head kick returner last year. Try to get maybe over 22 yards per return. Uh, tackling. That's very important. I know he's not really a gunner, but if you can make some shoestring tackles, the Giants need that. Be good in coverage. And on kick returns, or actually, no, punt returns and kick returns too, be where the ball is. Kind of like, you know, where you were when Valus Jones dropped the ball. Brightwell recovers it. The New York Giants basically win the game. And that's just, you know, some things he needs to do in order to win a position on the roster. Now, how can he possibly lose a spot on the roster? Lack of burst in the return game, not much improvement from last year. He doesn't really show it. Lack of contribution on special teams and quiet in camp behind Corbin, Gray, and Breida. Obviously, Brightwell isn't your number one starting running back. Um, he never will be one. But at the same time, Eric Gray has a lot to prove. And he's getting a lot of one reps with Saquon Barkley not being at mandatory minicamp. And if this whole contract situation sinks into July you'll be seeing maybe all these different running backs getting one reps or it's just Eric Gray and Matt Breida and Gary Brightwell is going to need to push even harder because those guys are getting the opportunities and he's not but if he's quiet in camp especially behind Deshaun Corbin who didn't make the roster last year especially behind Breida who obviously is a vet so he might get the uh the veteran excuse over him and then Eric Gray who's a draft pick it's going to be tough so I think both ways could work if you could just go in and show some burst make the most of your carries at least over four per carry I mean obviously offensive line depending um and just also show your duties on special teams also Jeff Smith he I think he's a gunner and might be a kick returner as well but regardless the point the point here is return game Special teams overall, I think that's the way Gary Brightwell could make the roster. And then usage in the backfield. Catch as many passes, make the most of your opportunities, and show burst in the backfield. But unfortunately, I do have Gary Brightwell getting cut. I don't see a way he does make the roster. He could make the practice squad, maybe tries to slip his way there. I don't know if the Giants will find a true kick returner. I don't want it to be Jalen Hyatt. I don't want it to be Odori Jackson. Maybe Darnay Holmes if he has some burst. Khalil Pimpleton. Try one of the guys that doesn't necessarily have a starter role or competing for a starter role. Like Khalil Pimpleton, we know he's not competing for a starting wide receiver spot. Darnay Holmes, if he loses to Cordell Flott, maybe you could slide him in there. Brightwell. Again, that's where he kind of has that loophole. As for running back, I think he's pretty much just all odds are against him. He's probably not making the team that way, so it's all special teams. But I do have him getting cut. Like, comment, subscribe to all the good stuff. Turn on post notifications so you know where live stream pops, stream drops. Appreciate you coming back. I'm going to try to put one out every single day. 
at least of these videos every single day before training camp or until I run out of candidates. So appreciate you guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.